Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and this is my 2015 Yukon Denali. And so what I wanted to do is just put a video together showing the things that I've had to fix on it over the last few years of ownership. Uh, I bought it about three years ago. And uh, when people ask me about these, they say, would you recommend one? And so simply put, I would say they are great vehicles. I really enjoy them for my family and their uh, capabilities for towing and everything but you do have to accept that they have a lot of small problems so if you're willing to fix those or know somebody who's pretty good mechanically um, then they can mostly all be resolved very simply in fact i have videos on how to fix just about everything that's wrong with these uh, and I'll put the playlist of that in the video description. But uh, anyway, just wanted to go over um, and walk around and show you everything that I've had trouble with and uh, how it's been fixed. Uh, the first thing, I don't mind that the, uh, the running lights are flashing. That's the camera picking that up. But I have the headlights on to show you. Uh, if you can tell, uh, this headlight over here is like a yellowish color right because the bulb is uh, basically burning out and then this side is the bright white like it should be so that was one of the things um, very simple to fix and again check the video description I'll show you exactly how to fix that and uh, we'll just walk around the car a little bit here and uh, we'll just kind of talk about exterior wise everything that's come up uh, the next thing is the wheels this has different wheels on it because the 22 inch wheels that I had uh, had cracked so here's a quick look of the rim. You, I couldn't tell how I was losing air pressure. I couldn't find a nail or anything until I took the wheel off and sprayed it with uh, soapy water and then it bubbled. Uh, one of them cracked and it was hard to say whether it was from a pothole or somebody breaking uh, the rim itself, pounding on the weights or, or whatnot, but the wheel did crack. So I've actually put the GMC Sierra wheels on it and so they have a bigger sidewall, which gave it a nicer ride. So uh, it worked out a little bit better, except for 2019 has different uh, tire pressure sensors. So I do get a light on. And so this light will flash while the car is first starting up for a few minutes, but it does eventually go solid. So it's not too bad. Um, I could dismount every tire and put the new sensors on from 2015 to 2018, but uh, I don't want to really mess anything up because the tires are perfectly balanced and everything's good. But someday I'll probably have to put a new sensor on. Um, otherwise, a lot of people too, I get comments all the time of their problems. I'll say a lot of people have a, a leaking issue with uh, this antenna. Mine has not given me any trouble there, luckily. But something that uh, I have had trouble on on just about every door is this stripping right here. Uh, it will come apart, and so you're driving down the freeway, and it'll just start lifting up and then start flapping. So that's uh, definitely something that happens on each one of these. Uh, I just fixed it with some double-sided sticky tape, some Gorilla Glue, glue one that's like uh, duct tape, but double-sided sticky, and it's been pretty good. Uh, otherwise, you'll have to buy uh, the new piece. Um, so otherwise, exterior, the next thing we're going to get into is the taillights. Uh, I have had both of the taillights go out, and I have repaired both of them uh, using the method that you'll see in the video. Um, so basically, uh, there's a, on the little board on the back side of this, uh, there's two places where it will crack. And so when it's not making its connection, it will um, short out. So you'll be in the garage and everything looks like it's working fine. Um, again, this is flashing just from the camera, so sorry, don't mind that. Um, but uh, you'll hit the brakes and you'll see red on both sides, everything's good. But as you drive down the road, as soon as it's not making a connection, it will uh, <laughs> not work. And so here's a quick look of the circuit board on the back. You can see there's a hairline crack at the bottom and all it takes is for that to not be making a connection. Uh, so this is the back side of the tail light. I've cut away in two places where uh, it happens. And so as you can see, as I touch it, see how the light is working and not working, just depending on if that uh, connection is making the connection or not. Uh, so something uh, very simple to fix. Check the video description for the video on it. You'll have people tell you, hey, your brake light's out. And then you get home and you push on the brakes and... Uh, you'd say no, they're they're both working, 
but uh, it can be working on and off as that connection isn't being made. Uh, so exterior wise, that's pretty much the only trouble that I've had luckily. Um, other than that, it's been really good. Now, if you have a Yukon or a Tahoe or Suburban from any year, you probably have this. <laughs> Where this attaches to the window, it's the defroster cable. They just use like a, an epoxy that's uh, conductive and it will eventually just break off. So um, you can try to solder it back on, but it's really hard to solder to this surface. Uh, so the fix for this that I, I will do, so check the video description uh, and uh, someday it'll come up. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get that epoxy that's conductive. So you basically get a glue and then you epoxy it back on and, and it should be good. Uh, under the hood, the car has been perfect. All I've needed to do was put a new battery in it. And the battery wasn't even that old. It was three or four years old, but I think that's more just how batteries are these days. It's really hard to see any batteries last more than four years. This car has a lot of electronics on it, the HID headlights, everything like that. So um, everything else has been fine, but the, I did have to get a new battery. Um, but along the lines under the hood, uh, an issue I do expect at some point to get is with the lifters. Uh, there is a lot of trouble with it when it uh, switches from a V8 mode down to V4 and back. Um, eventually, uh, sometimes not all the cylinders will come back on and it can hurt the engine. Um, so I expect at some point I'll tear it apart and, and redo the lifters. Okay, interior-wise, I have to say it's a very comfortable uh, SUV. I love the way that it drives. And I really haven't had any issues other than uh, sometimes the DVD player will stop working. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's still playing, but the sound stops. And so there's a process that you self-learn where you hit the media button, then you go to the home button, then you click on video again, and then it'll turn back on. But uh, other than that, um, everything's worked. The Bluetooth for the phones... Uh, I haven't had really any electrical problems, so I've been very happy with it. And the only real complaint along those lines is that well, with the navigation, if you're playing um, music as well, you, it's hard to hear the the turn-by-turn -turn navigation from your phone. So it'll say, you know, at the next light, turn left or whatnot. You can basically not even hear that at all, no matter how you try to adjust the sound. So that's kind of uh, an annoyance. Uh, also, you'll notice too, the compass doesn't work. Um, so uh, with that said too, if you go into like technology mode, if you want to have uh, a different uh, setup here. So, you know, if you go into the technology mode, it's not going to have a lot of the data for you with the compass or anything like that. So um, same with navigation, it's not gonna work. The map will not work. So uh, if you come over here and go navigation, that's basically a useless feature. It doesn't really bother me too much because uh, I just use navigation on my phone, but uh, it shows my uh, vehicle is like, I'm not even near that, wherever it's showing on the map. <laughs> so I don't even know. Yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't even know where that is. Yeah, I'm not on the border of Canada. And so, yeah, if you look at the temperature gauge, for example, it says it's 66 degrees out right now, and it's really 61. It doesn't seem like it's off by much, but I have had it off by quite a bit more. Okay, the next thing we should cover is the transmission. So, um... It's a very good transmission on this. It's a eight speed, the eight L ninety E. But the only flaw that it has that seems to be common, I've seen a, a lot of other people have too, is that the temperature sensor for the transmission will go out and it's part of the transmission harness. So you have to take off the transmission oil pan and then disconnect the harness, put a new harness in. And uh, after that, it's it's fixed so it was a very easy fix especially because they changed the harness to a one piece where you would have to take apart the valve body and everything like that uh, and make it a real 
bad repair, but then they went back to a two-piece harness, so you only need to replace the bottom piece. So that's on the eight-speed Denali's, and uh, with that, um, a lot of people complain about torque shutter. So as you're coming to a stop or starting to drive off, it will shake pretty bad. And so um, in the video, you'll see where I put the new transmission harness on. It also goes with the ATF LV from Mobile One for the transmission fluid. And uh, adding that specific fluid seems to help with that, uh, as other people have reported. And I had really good luck with it. I haven't had any shifting problems or anything. So basically, the way that I knew that it had a transmission temperature sensor problem is it did get a check engine light for P0711. And uh, it said transmission temperature sensor right on it. Very easy to diagnose. And what the car was doing is um, when it was shifting from first gear to second gear, um, it would almost feel like the transmission was slipping. It was really kind of a, a delayed shift and a really long shift. And so I was worried that the transmission was going. So here's a quick clip from that video. This is the actual fluid that you want to use. Uh, check the video description for it as well. Again, I said I got the check engine light for P0711. And when I would hit the tow haul button, the temperature gauge would come in for the transmission and it would be at zero. And so that's how you would know uh, that it's bad and needs to be replaced. And that's after it's warmed up. Along those lines, uh, 2015 is the first year of this body style. And in 2015, they all had the six speed. And then halfway through 2015, that's when they changed to the eight speed. And they had the eight speed in the Denali from 2015 mid-year and 2016. And then 2017, they went to the 10 speed. So it's good and bad that there's only basically a year and a half run of that transmission in these because uh, there's not a lot of 8L90Es to be uh, repaired by outside companies uh, for this. Um, they're in the Camaro and other things, but I, when I was looking into transmission options in case it was the transmission, there wasn't a lot of uh, availability for rebuilding 8L90s uh, for the Yukon, but uh, maybe that's changed over the years as they've uh, kind of gone... Um, uh, you know, gotten a little bit older. Okay, one of the main reasons I got this SUV was I wanted a really nice, powerful, good capability towing SUV that uh, was safe for the family and had good air conditioning. Okay, that was like the number one reason for the kids and the wife, all that. Um, these Denali's are all prone to bad condensers. And so basically, if you look in here, there's a radiator um, for the air conditioning and as the condenser. And right along this rim, uh, it will usually crack. So it's pretty easy to see. If you look in there, you can see it moist and wet um, where it's cracked. And so when we were test driving this, the AC actually did not work. Uh, so as part of getting it, um, you know, buying it. We, we turned it down, but uh, they went and fixed it all. And so um, then we were satisfied with it. And uh, ever since it's been pretty good, but uh, something to mention is that the condensers on these, basically all of them, 5.3 liter V8 or the 6.2, the Tahoe, the Yukon, Suburban, seems like all of the condensers do fail. So um, it's not too easy to get that out some people have managed to push the radiator back and slide it out from you know from in the engine bay but um, the proper way and the way most people would do it is taking off the entire bumper and everything just to get that out uh, along those same lines if you ever need to get the headlight out it's also has to be done like the whole headlight assembly it has to be done by taking off the front bumper and, and which is part of the grill and everything. So it's a pretty big process for the headlight assembly. The headlight bulb itself, as you'll see in the video I made, is very easy to get out. Um, but you have a headlight bulb and then you also have a ballast that's up in there. So it is kind of tricky. In my case, luckily, it's just the headlight bulb that needs to be replaced. Okay, something else to cover on these and again, uh, I get a lot of comments from other people telling me their problems. So in this video, I just want to mention some of the common things that you'll run across. Uh, it does have uh, an air suspension on it and you'll hear it in the garage clicking on and it has a little pump that uh, pumps it back up. 
and so apparently those are go bad pretty often and so um, they need to be replaced it's just basically part of the strut uh, just need to buy the new strut and everything and same with the lift gate the actuator that actually lifts it up um, that tends to uh, go out quite often and uh, you know just a minor thing the mirror is pretty loose something that uh, I don't see happening in a lot of other cars at this age probably can just be tightened up there with a screw or, or whatnot underneath the cover but uh, that was something uh, also the temperature that reads out right here sometimes it hasn't been completely accurate um, so just a small thing that I've noticed so I bought this with 51,000 miles on it. It has 76 now. So that's just the mileage range um, and where it is right now in its life. Okay, there's been some other smaller things along the way, like the battery replacement for the key fob. And I have videos on how to fix that. It's very simple. And some of this you expect to happen. But um, all in all, I want to say that it is a very good SUV. I very much enjoyed it. Um, and I plan to keep it... Um, <laughs> It's done everything I've needed it to do. It's towed really well. I have review videos on that too. So check the playlist in the video description. That's the best way to get to know this vehicle is uh, the videos I've made on it, the repairs I've done, some of the re other review parts. And uh, all in all, I think that once again, they are great SUVs. Um, they're very comfortable. They're very strong. Um, but they do have a lot of smaller problems and luckily most of them are very easy to fix um, other than the, the lifters would probably be, be the worst part and so I'm not excited about that one as it's coming um, but someday I'll have to do it but it is easy on these because it's a push rod engine so it's a lot easier to work on than the overhead cam engines and uh, as well, that air conditioning is probably the worst part uh, just because it would require taking off the whole front bumper and front end and uh, replacing it and having it charged and everything like that. So anyway, please in the comments, uh, put any questions that you have. And if you own these, put the problems that you've had. I know if I've done, as I've done that in the past, the video, some people have had some really bad luck, a whole list of issues. And this had a lot of recalls on it. Uh, when I got it and I looked under it and sure enough the oil pan gasket has been replaced that was before I owned it um, and you know there's the navigation was replaced there was a lot of smaller things uh, when it was brand new and so they are prone to having some smaller issues but uh, if you get them used and for the right price I think they're a great vehicle uh, so anyway thanks for watching and check the uh, video description in the playlist and subscribe to the channel if you're new thanks guys